As always, we pray for all of you that are listening to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that you, the listener, that you recognize we're not doing this for money. We could, but we haven't as of yet. But we've been doing this just for amen for your listening pleasures that you might know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Now, everyone needs money, but we need the Lord. Yes, Lord. Everyone wants to live. And so Jesus Christ said he is the way, the truth, and the life. So we haven't even done, and there are people that are able to do so. We can try to get out there and get a thousand million of hits and stuff like that. But that's not what we've done. We try to let the Lord lead whoever comes upon these teaching and these preachment that maybe you will take it serious. Because someone's always preaching. Someone's always teaching. And maybe I can reach you. And... What I want to say, so, sometimes when you talk the truth, people get their feelings hurt. People get their toes stepped on. I get my feelings hurt. I get my toes stepped on. But that's how you mature. Amen? Everything is not going to be sweet. It's not going to be what you want. Some of the best things in life for you may not taste so sweet. Some of the best medicine, some of the best foods, they may not be sweet. But if it's going to help you to be strong, sometimes you have to endure some bitterness sometimes in order to get where you need to be. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I was just sharing with the people that all over the world right now, Jesus, since we say we believe in Jesus, some of us are Christians. Some are low class, or high class, middle class, low key. Islam is slipping in our school. That's all I want to say. Islam. I'm not knocking Islam right now. I don't believe in Islam. No, I don't. But that's for people that do believe in Islam. Mm -hmm. But the question I would like to deal with, thank you very much, is why, why is there Islam in our schools, in American schools, but at the same time, we can't say the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven. We can't say the Lord is our shepherd, Psalm 23. If prayer was taken out of the school because it was fair for everyone, then nothing should change right now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. No Islam, no nothing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's not even about Islam right now. It's about Islam in a way because of the fact that Islam is being in our schools, mm -hmm. but yet no one can say the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. That's unfair. So that makes it look like it's been a lie from the beginning. Amen? Amen? If it's been a lie from the beginning, then somebody got to pray. Now, no one can really stop you from praying, but when someone tells you that you can't pray in the name of Jesus out loud, when the prayers that they're telling you you can pray, the founder of that had a sword in his hand. Threatening people with a sword. Jesus never threatened anyone with a sword. I never read it. Did you read it? No, I heard Jesus say, love your enemies. Uh -huh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I heard Jesus say, do good. The Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, he said, do good to those that despitefully use you. That's a powerful statement. And it would take God yes. or some eternal power to cause you not to get revenge on a person that did you wrong. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yet Jesus taught this. <laughs> God bless you. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, the last verse, he said, be ye perfect as I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing we'll say to one another is we're not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So that means we would need more Jesus. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Because if Jesus was able to talk, which he did, he talked without using his fist. I don't see anywhere where he used his fist. I don't see anywhere where he used a gun. Mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere where he used chemical warfare. Mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere where he terrorized. Mm -hmm. Now, notice I said Jesus. I didn't say go back to the Old Testament because then that would be a whole nother open up of knowledge of why God did certain things the way he did it. But the same God of the Old Testament, which is the representation of the same Jesus mm -hmm. who was in the Old Testament that you may not recognize, he decided to be more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that, right? Mm -hmm. 
Because as I often say, no matter how old you are, if you were to look at your age right now, there are people that are dead that are your age all over the world. Is that right? Yes. People younger than you are dead all over the world, right? Uh -huh. So why are you and I alive? Is it because we did something mm -hmm. so great? No. It's because of the love of God. It's because of God's mercy, right? Mm -hmm. So I want us to pay attention that just like this Islam in the school today and know Christ, we better pray for Christ to be in the school because these are what I see the Bible as the last day. Now, you don't have to believe the Bible, but what I'm saying to you, you can see in our news, in or go online, Islam in American schools. Type it in. No Christian. Christians may be in the school, but they can't represent Christianity or born again. Or Jesus, because Jesus never said be Christian. They were called Christian in the Bible. One time, it says they were called Christians at Antioch. But the name stood because the name Christian is supposed to be like Christ. Amen? Now, but if you want to find out what Christ told each person to be, he said in John chapter 3, he said be born again. And as our dear brother was saying this morning, which is a word I often use, uh, our brother said, we got to be rewired. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. Your mind has to be reset because we've all been programmed. Mm -hmm. So that was a beautiful thing that he said. He said, you got to be rewired because mm -hmm. that's what you have to do. Because your wires, if your wires are hooked up to the wrong thing, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get your power from. Mm -hmm. So if your power is all from the world, and if we were born in sin, S-I-N, and if I used an acronym, Satan, in our nature, right? So by nature, we're doing the things that come from Satan inside of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus said, be born again, we're born. So when we're born, we're doing things naturally. And we don't always see what it is because we, we didn't have anything to do with who was our father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't have anything to do with who was our mother. Mm -hmm. Amen. We didn't have anything to do with the political structure, educational, economical structure, or the ecumenical structure. We just were brought, brought into it and taught right into it. Is that right? Yeah. So now you were born. So this is why God is merciful to us because he knows you are a victim. It's like a person being raped and molested. It's not their fault they were raped and molested. It's not your fault. But now, once you become older and you start practicing the deeds of your molester, are you walking with me? Mm -hmm. And the person that raped you or the person that mistaught you, and you learn better as you mature, right? Mm -hmm. Once you become what we become, say, grown men and grown women, now we have the opportunity to let go of the hands yeah. of those that taught us, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we were connected to them or not. And try to do a new thing, right? Yeah. And when we're introduced to God, the new thing is to be born again, to be rewired, mm -hmm. to have our mind reprogrammed. So how long do you think you live to become the person that you are? You don't know. You can be here 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, etc., and you still don't know it all, right? Mm -hmm. So when you finally come into the knowledge of God, it's like you starting over again, but you still have that old you. We talk about bipolar, having different personalities, right? So can you imagine the godly side of you, the part of you that's learning God, have to fight against every type of data that's been in you for years? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of data. Cleaning up your house. Can you imagine how many just newspapers and papers and news? If you didn't throw out any mail, any mail at all, can yeah. you imagine how much mail you would have right. in a month? That's right. Now imagine in a year. That's right. Now imagine two years, mm -hmm. three years, four years, ten years, twenty years. Mm -hmm. Woo! And you wasn't able to throw that stuff out of your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the garbage can and get those pieces of envelopes, right? Mm -hmm. And because some of us hold bills for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Just in case we we'll say, "I'm gonna keep it." And you find out you have a thing for two years mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Then as you get older, you might say, "I don't need to hold these for two years, maybe a few months." Mm -hmm. Because once they you have bills or current bills, they're like this bill shows I paid for that bill. Why do I need years after years? Mm -hmm. But before you knew that, yeah. 
you kept them all. And you have a whole going place. You know, some people open up the cloud and stuff fall on their head, right? Mm -hmm. Right now. Now, but the key is we, can, we can't throw that stuff out of our mind like that. Mm -hmm. Some of it burns out. Then when we think that it's not there, we remember things that we thought we forgot. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with God, a new mind, we have to continue because the old stuff is always trying to push out the new. Mm -hmm. The world, the sin, the Satan of our mind is always trying to push, push out the Savior of our mind. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So today for a couple of minutes, I want you to see just like Jesus is, I'm going to show you in the scripture, how he went against the system. You don't have the power really to go against the system, and neither do I. So what the example that Jesus leaves, but you have to at least pray because the system may not care about you or I. You can be a part of, but the question is, do they really care about you? I'll let you make that decision. I really want to pull down everything that I've ever recorded, and I may do it, but before I do it, I want to make a, at least a, a good attempt to try to reach somebody. We all need Jesus. Yes, we do. You may not see it. I hope you do. But look at us. I asked a question that you can look at your news and see. Why is Islam being taught in American schools but not Christianity? If you're going to teach Islam, you should be teaching Christianity too. Be fair. Why is the people that supposed to, even if you don't believe it, ran into the World Trade Center? And if you don't believe that, what about all this other stuff they show in the news where they're cutting people's head off? For, just because they don't come to Allah, Islam. I thought we were, they were supposed to be a peace. That's not peace. Yet the Jesus that is a peace, you don't want us to say anything about. It's scary to me. I looked up the top religions. On the top was Christianity, two point something billion. After that was Islam, one point something billion. Now the problem with Christianity is the split. Just like this book, you have a left side and a right side. Vatican, which is Catholic, Protestant. If the Vatican is as powerful as they are, and they are powerful, why hasn't the Vatican said something about prayer being in school before Islam? Could it be, like one guy said, Alberto Rivera, a past Jew Jew Jesuit priest, that the Vatican started Islam? And if Islam is under Christianity, what Christianity are they talking about? Are they talking about the Christianity of the Vatican or the Christianity of the Protestant or they combine them both? And would Islam not like to be taken second best, mm -hmm. want to take first That's place? Second. And if someone orchestrated them, maybe they are allowing that to happen so that the Christians can't say anything. Because why would you want to kill? Why would you want to silence people that believe in a Jesus that tells you thou shalt not kill? You go to jail for killing, right? So killing is supposed to be bad. So what Jesus promotes is good, right? Thou shalt not lie. We all say we don't like liars. Is that right? Why would we be against people that promote what Jesus said? Thou should not commit adultery. You don't like your man cheating on you, your woman cheating on you. So these are the things that Jesus promoted. So it's like false prophecy of what Jesus said in Matthew 24. In the last days, there'll be false, right? It's like people want to take the examples of Christ, but they don't want Christ to get the credit. Am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. So the devil has a way of seeming right but actually is really wrong. So on the outskirts, they're really telling you, don't lie, but they're the biggest liars. Mm -hmm. Don't cheat, but the biggest cheaters. Don't commit adultery, 
but the biggest adulteries, huh? Mm -hmm. But on the outskirts, they tell people to do the right thing, but when you get into the, the inner court, the more powerful with the elite, you find out they look married, happy, right? They look like they don't lie, don't cheat, but you find out they're the biggest <laughs> liars and cheaters that there ever was. And this could be the only reason why they have a problem with Jesus. Am I making any kind of sense? This is so serious right now because you know people like you go, hey, hey, hey. but then to other people you're saying you're an idiot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I hope you get this. Praise the Lord. Because I know we here, we can understand it both. Is that right? But here in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, let's look at what Jesus said in the 33rd verse, brother. Can you say that for me? Yes, uh, Matthew 23, 33. All right. You snakes. Uh-oh. He said you what? You snakes. You snakes. He didn't say you women. You men. You men, you women. Mm -hmm. Fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters. He said what? You snakes. You snakes. You brood as of vipers. You brood, that means you group of snakes. Go ahead. Yep. How will you escape? being condemned to hell. Wow. How will you escape being condemned to hell? How will you escape the judgment of hell? So that means whatever hell is, because people are out on it, on the verdict, what hell is, right? Mm -hmm. But if we listen to Jesus, because that's basically where the word is at. It's, I don't hear it in other books. It's basically in the Bible, right? So hell is not good, whatever it is, right? I can say it's fire, another person say it, but according to even right here, Jesus has said, who, who what? How, how can you escape the judgment of hell? Well, what's your word? I said, how will you escape being condemned to hell? Being condemned to hell. So this is a sentence. Mm -hmm. Condemned to hell. It's nothing good in that. So the reason why I even take out the time to do what I'm doing, like I said, this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Talking about the Lord, and we got this guy, Zuckerbuck, whatever his name, Zuckerberg. that came up with Facebook, right? Zuckerbuck. Zuckerbuck, I think. Zuckerberg. Right? It, it's not for our, we using it, but it's not for our good. Trust me. That's for the CIA, FBI, and whoever else to find out what's on your mind. And people fall right for it. Because everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be uh, have attention. Everybody wants somebody to hear them. Even so, this is a way that even if you've never been heard, you can be on Facebook, you can be on this, that, well, all these different, uh, what do we call it, social media. Social media. But they're using it against you. So if they're going to use it against you, at least you should try to be as positive That's right. as you That's can. Right. And humble on it. Don't right. be dumb. That's right. Because when you do something wrong, they're going to look you up. They're going to report it. Huh? And it's the same if you're on social media and you commit any kind of crime. Because you're going you to put your father's name Everybody out there, your mother's it. name. Yep. You got your brother, your sister, your baby, your cat, your dog. You got everybody Everybody's online. Connected. Come on. Yep. Huh? Because you done fell into the trap and it becomes like smoking cigarettes. No matter how dangerous that you talk about, oh, it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using social media for something important, you've just been suckered right into it. And even if you're using it for some important, you've still been suckered right into it. Amen? Because just because you're positive doesn't make the people that's listening feel that you're positive. If they didn't love Jesus, do you think they're going to love you? If they didn't love Jesus, do you think they're going to love me? No. So why am I doing this? So that you might miss the judgment of hell. Whether you believe in it or not, at least you can search it out for yourself. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 23, 33, you vipers, snakes. Now, let go back to the beginning, the snake. Whether he's talking metaphorically, whether snakes, because we just got finished talking about reptilians. Mm -hmm. People that are reptilians. We have just got finished talking about uh, in certain labs, underground and wherever, that there are lizards that are walking around, shape of a lizard, but have a lab coat on. 
so they can talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing because I know some people are looking at some of y'all faces because we probably don't even believe, but these anything can happen. Why do you think they have <laughs> talking cartoons and stuff? But they've been telling us the whole time that stuff been going on, but we've been laughing at it. Huh? Well, they've been showing us all the time that there's magic going on. Hollywood, magic. It's all about occultism, mysticism, mm -hmm. uh, enchanting secrets, witchcraft, warlocks, uh, opening up different portals into air. We, we may call them aliens now. If you saw a, a lizard walking and talking, mm -hmm. you would think that it was a, either you call it just an animal, but if it talked like a human being, or if it had on a pair of glasses mm -hmm. and a, a pen and a paper yeah. and a lab coat, mm -hmm. you would think, this is crazy. Is that right? Uh -huh. But this is what we're living in now. The Bible talks about in Ephesians 2 and 2, princes of powers in the air. So we don't know what they find when they go up there in space. Mm -hmm. I don't believe anyone walked on the moon. I don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But you don't know what they came in contact with. When you hear people talking about so many people, do you think they're all lying talking about they've been abducted and something that had sex with them and all kinds of stuff? And hold it, look on the online for hybrid animals and, and oh man, you'll see things you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And they're always switching, putting things together. Yeah. They're always trying something. But Jesus is talking to a system here in the 23rd of Matthew. He's talking to a system of religious people and political people, all powerful people. He wasn't talking to, well, he was talking to, because if you go to the first, um, give me the first verse, brother. 33? Uh, no, the first verse of 23. Okay, first verse. Mm -hmm. right. First verse of 23 says, um, then Jesus says to the crowd. Now, Jesus was talking to the crowd, so it's whoever was in the crowd. So he had his disciples there too, right? Yes. Go ahead. And to his disciples. And to his disciples. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The teachers of the law, then, oh, no, it says the teachers of the law the, and the Pharisees. The teachers of the law. So he's touching on those that are in political astuteness, mm -hmm. power, the elite, mm -hmm. and the religious leader. Right. The law and the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Now, the Pharisees were ones who believed in the resurrection. They believed in miracles. They believed in God to a degree, but yet they were 